Okay, so I've had enough questions about this problem where I think it's worth going over it, especially since we know one of the test questions is going to be an interference problem. Um, so the setup of this problem is this. You have this, uh, this dude over here, and you have two speakers. Now the two speakers are in line, one of the speakers is, is an, on a direct line with the ears of the person. And this person is standing a distance they're calling L away from this speaker, and the speakers are a distance D away from each other. Now I think the thing that really bothers people about this problem is it's completely symbolic. But let me break it down for you so if it ends up being a problem with numbers, you at least have the general idea of how to approach these. Now the big thing we want to look for here is that this thing says that we are looking for this man is walking straight towards this lower speaker, so he's moving this way, okay? And we want to look for all of the minimums in sound intensity. Now when you hear minimum sound intensity, That should tell you destructive interference, okay? And destructive interference has a mathematical thing where you can find it. And the, it's that when we have identical sources, so these speakers are in phase, the path length difference is going to be equal to half integers of the wavelength, so n plus 1 half times the wavelength. Now you're going to say, okay, nowhere in here are we given anything that looks like r or anything that looks like lambda. But we are given the speed of sound and frequency. And as we know, this is equal to frequency times lambda. So if we want to find lambda, it's just speed of sound over frequency. Okay? The other thing, so basically we can plug that in there. The other thing is the path length difference. So the path length difference is the difference in the distances between the person that's receiving the waves. So this guy over here. This distance, which I'm going to call x, and you're like, well, that one was called L. But the thing about x is it's changing. So this person's walking towards speaker 1, which means that x is a variable. x is going to start at L, and it's going to go all the way to, I don't know, maybe 0, but the, probably the last minimum is not at 0. Depends on if D is the same, is a certain integer number of wavelengths away, half integer. Okay, so the first path is this. The second path length is something that you can see is part of a right triangle, so x squared plus d squared, that's going to be the good old hypotenuse, okay? So the path length difference, delta r, is going to be x squared plus d squared, which is this thing, um, minus the other path length, which is x. And we know all of this has to be n plus 1 half times lambda, which we know is v over frequency. So here's our equation, and we actually don't end up needing to write delta r, we just need this. And I'm going to do part b, and then I'll show you how part a sort of comes from part b and you don't have to go through this crazy inequality to really understand what's going on. So we're going to do part B, and we're going to look for where is he with respect to the pole, or basically speaker 1, at the times when he hears minimum. So we're looking for the distance x, but like, as you can see, it's not that easy to solve x. But there's some algebra we can do to make it a little bit easier. So let's move stuff around. x squared plus d squared n plus 1 half plus x. Well, okay, now we square both sides. And this becomes just x squared plus d squared. And this gets kind of complicated, but it's not too crazy. So you just square this, n plus 1 half, and n plus 1 half gets squared, plus x squared plus 2, because it's this times this plus this times this. Let me get rid of those lines. And then that's going to be n plus 1 half v over frequency x. So now we have this really ugly long thing, but you can notice right away that 
x squared appears on both sides, so that goes away. And then you just do a little bit more rearranging. So we just need to get x by itself. And it turns out you can end up with x is equal to n plus 1 half squared v squared over frequency squared minus d squared divided by all the stuff that was a coefficient of x. And that's actually your answer for part B. Now you're going to say, well, this only gives you one value, but that's not true because we know n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now the interesting thing about this n is as you start to plug these in, you'll notice, and you plug in one here, you'll notice you plug in one here, n equals 0 actually gives you your biggest value because n equals zero gives you half squared times this squared minus d squared. So since you're subtracting something from it, your n equals zero actually gives you a pretty big value because you're also dividing by this larger number. And it, it helps if you actually do this with numbers, but what ends up happening is you get different values as you plug in n, and you just plug in n until your value no longer makes sense. So the way that we have this set up, anything that is any x we get that's bigger than l, like let's say we get an x out here. Well, that's bigger than l, it doesn't count because we know we started at l and we're walking this way. If we get an x here, that doesn't count. But if we get an x here, that one counts. And what you'll notice is these are going to start getting closer together as you get closer in. But there should be a discrete number of them. And actually a way more robust problem with way fewer solutions would be to start at where this guy is here and walk this way because you'd probably get less stuff. But this is how this works and the way that we'd figure out A, like the number of stuff you get, is just anytime x is less than L, you just write that inequality. Well, in reality, when you're doing a problem like this, you're just going to start plugging in the values and see what you get. And you just plug in values until you get something where it's undefined or it doesn't make sense with the parameters, and then you can stop. So you should probably get, I mean, let's say you picked some simple numbers. You should get somewhere between 1 and like 50 of these things. Now on a test, I'm not going to ask you to have 50, but there's probably going to be more than 1. So figure out how to do that. Hopefully this helps. Um, let me know what you think.